Hey everybody, it's Brett. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. So I have a massive, massive, massive book haul, which I think is a combination of subscription services, books coming in, as well as a million things that I've previously ordered that I completely forgot about. So I wanted to share some of them because there's some titles I am so excited about in here, some stuff that looks really cool that might pique your interest. So let's dive right in. First is one of my most anticipated titles for this year. Um, I read about this um, some time ago, um, and luckily for me, a friend of mine, Lori at Book Out of PNW on Instagram, sent me her galley after she was finished. Although the book has been published this week, it got an incredible review in the New York Times. The book is My Government Means to Kill Me by Rashid Newsom. <clears throat> Rashid is a writer and currently the uh, one of the showrunners for the NBC Peacock show Fresh Prince, which is the uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air Bel redo, which they've kind of taken the comedy and made it into a drama. So he's one of the showrunners of that. Um, the book is about a young gay black man in the early 80s coming into his own in New York City. Uh, obviously, the AIDS crisis will become a part of it, but it's supposed to be really funny, really sharp. He incorporates real-life characters in with the fictional characters, which gives it almost a meta quality. I don't know. This is... I'm so, so, so excited to start this. I'm really going to try to finish this before the end of the month. This might be jumping some booker titles, who knows, but that's the first. <clears throat> Next, A Waiter in Paris by Edward Chisholm. I have no idea where I first read about this, although it's, I know it's, well, on Amazon, it's it's like they're one of their number one bestsellers in terms of nonfiction. Edward Chisholm was a, is a, was a writer who was living in, living in Paris and so wrote this book almost as an expose of what it's like working in these high-end restaurants in Paris. And of course, we all have these perceptions because Paris is one of the foodie capitals of the world that it would be beautiful and amazing. And, and you know, I have to read you a part of this, which I think says so much about it. You inhabit a world of inhuman hours, snatch sleep and dive bars, scraping by on coffee, bread and cigarettes, often under sadistic managers with a wage so low you're fighting your colleagues for tips. Your colleagues, including thieves, narcissists, ex-soldiers, immigrants, wannabe actors, and drug dealers, it sounds very much like my business, are the closest to family that you'll ever get. I think this sounds fantastic, intriguing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big uh, Francophile, so all of this completely works for me. Yes. Then I'm jumping back um, a little bit. I got this off of Pango. I found this um, because someone had been raving about this on Bookstagram, um, A True Story by Mene Muzamora. This is basically uh, an updated or a reinvention of uh, Bronte's Wuthering Heights, which to be perfectly honest, I've never read. So for me, it will just be an original novel. Um, but it it sounds great about a um, uh, an ambitious Japanese immigrant who's coming to New York in the 60s. Uh, it also won the Japanese, Japan's prestigious Yomiuri Literature Prize. Uh, it's obviously a massive chunkster, so I don't know when I'll get to this, but in the meantime, it will be a wonderful doorstop. Uh, so I'm excited about this. Um, then Jamie Ford's The da the Many Daughters of A Fong Moy. I've had a couple people who I know have read this and loved it. They also say the audio is great, which is probably how I'm going to start it and then work through both. This is a multi-generational story of a family. Um, the audio version of it is a full cast for those of you who are into the audiobooks. So I'm, uh, I think this looks really interesting. I, I didn't read his previous novel, Hotel at the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, which I hear is great. So this is going to be my entree into Jamie Ford. Also from Book of the Month Club, and I think I'm going to have to do a post about Book of the Month Club. Just musings, my thoughts about it, 
and subscription um, book clubs in general. If that's something you guys would be interested in see, let me know. Um, I have thoughts. But anyway, Alice Feeney's Daisy Darker. I'm, I really like Alice Feeney. I think she's a, a smart thriller writer. I, I really liked His and Hers. I also liked uh, other books that she wrote that I liked, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Um, these are, I think she writes totally fun, kind of stepped up uh, beach read thrillers. This one is kind of about a, a family get together. It seems like a locked room uh, murder mystery type of thing. But um, I think that's what it is, and I'm, and I'm excited about that. Next, first of all, uh, Sirens and Muses by Antonia Angres. Angres, again, hearing great things about this. I love this cover, which is completely like seduced by this cover. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, also, I, I love a campus novel, love them. I loved Vladimir last year. Uh, this one, four artists are drawn into a web of, web of rivalry and desire at an elite art school and on the streets of New York in this magnificent debut for fans of Writers and Lovers and The Goldfinch. Well, that sold me right there because Writers and Lovers I thought was fantastic and The Goldfinch is one of my favorite books. So, but it's about this girl. It focuses on, um, and it's 2011, one girl, Louisa Arsenault. Um, I think it, uh, about her and her friends, she gets involved with this woman. Beyond that, I don't know, which is fine with me because I want to go in surprise. But again, love this cover. I think this looks great. Next, The Evening Hero by Marie Myung Oke Lee. Um, I know very little of this, so I'd rather just read you the, uh, uh, the jacket sleeve. A sweeping novel at once moving and darkly comic, following a Korean immigrant's pursuing the American dream. Dr. Youngman Kwok is in the twilight of his life. Every day for the last 50 years, he's brushed his teeth, slipped on his shoes, and headed to Horse Breath's General Hospital, where as an obstetrician, he treats the women and babies of the small rural Minnesota town he chooses to call home. <clears throat> this was the life he longed for when he immigrated from Korea after the Korean War, forced to leave behind his family's ancestors' village and all that he do, knew, all that he do, and all that he do, all that he knew. But his life is built upon a lie, and one day a letter threatens to expose it. How is that for my little lead-in to make you kind of salivate? Beautiful cover, again, which is one of the reasons I picked it up. I just thought that looked stunning. So never read anything by her before. Interesting. This next I'm really excited for. I was excited about this book anyway because I had read about it previous to coming out and it sounded, you know, very uh, up my alley. Um, and then when I saw that Illumicrate, another subscription service that I belong to, um, Illumicrate was doing a version of it. I was so excited because the cover was cool enough alone. So let me show it to you. This is Babel. Um, Babel is out now. It's getting great reviews. But this, I just have to show you how beautiful, what a gorgeous job Illumicrate did on this. Okay, lovely cover. And then um, this says on the side, sprayed, an act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Beautiful, beautiful inside where it's, you know, you can write your property of whom. And then cute little library card looking thing with the author's signature. I mean, I... Illumicrate, I don't love all their books. It's just not my thing all the time. And sometimes I think, oh, I should just, you know, maybe I'll cancel it. And then I get something like this, which I wanted. And it is, it is just gorgeous. So Babel is, is basically about a boy who gets recruited to a school in Oxford that is called the, I think it's called something, the Institute of Language or Babel. But there's a whole magic component to this. They said it's very much like, if you like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, that you'd like this or the secret history. So all of those things, it sounds almost a little bit, you know, with a little bit of um, ordinary monsters thrown in as well. So this completely sounds intriguing to me. It's definitely going to be on my TBR for next month. So Babel. All right, next I had uh, Mary and the Ketchups, which also I got from Pango. People, I'm telling you, Pango is amazing. You have to check it out. By Jennifer Close. Again, this is a multi-generational family story, um, which I love those. The messier, the better. 
I, I just think they're great. Uh, this one is an irresistible, an irresistible comedy of manners about three generations of a Chicago restaurant family and the deep fried beer batter cream cheese frosted love that feeds them all. <clears throat> I've heard this is a total feel good book. This would have probably, if I got it earlier, made my like, you know, books you have to read before the summer's over. But uh, Jennifer Close, Marrying the Ketchups. Fire Island, A Century and the Life of an American Paradise by Jack Parlett. This was, uh, this is a pick this month for Dr. Eric Cervini, who I uh, followed on Instagram. He is a queer historian who wrote a book called um, The Deviant's War, and it's fantastic. He also produces a show on uh, Discovery Plus called The Book of Queer, which is um, about uh, historical figures who were queer. Um, anyway, this is, he created, he started a book club and this was this month's choice from his book club, which I thought was interesting, all about the, you know, history of uh, Fire Island, including the, the, the culture that came out of it, the art, um, the influences. So that's that. Four Treasures of the Sky by Jenny Ting Yu Zhang. Um, first of all, this is subscription service. This is a Goldsboro um, book edition. They do incredible, beautiful signed first editions um, of their you know own kind of books. They do their own versions, um, and they do some incredible stuff. I knew nothing about this book though. Again, my girl Ann Patchett says it's engulfing and heartbreaking, and it says in the tradition of half a yellow sun and the kite runner comes the story of a young Chinese girl fighting to claim her place in the 1880s American West. Well, you know, I love the Kite Runner, so I have a feeling this could be something um, I absolutely can love too. And feels like there's one of those under the radar books. So. Next, Sean Hewitt's All Down Darkness Wide. Love this cover so much. Um, this is not even out yet in the States. I got this in the UK after I watched um, Simon Savage, the Savage Read, him talking about it. And I thought it just sounded terrific. He also says the author is a great guy. Points for that. A luminous and haunting memoir from a prize-winning poet, a story of love, heartbreak, and a coming of age and the fearless exploration of queer identity and trauma. When Sean meets Elias, or it's probably Sian, I don't know if the, the accent. When... When, when Sean, I'm calling it Sean, I'm just saying Sean, Sean, S-E-A-N with the accent over the E. I know it's probably Sian. I'm calling it Sean. When Sean meets Elias, the two fall headlong into a love story, but as Elias struggles with severe depression, the couple comes face to face with crisis. Wrestling with this, Sean Hewitt delves deep into his own history, enlisting the ghosts of queer figures and poets before him, from a 19th century cemetery in Liverpool to the pine forest of Gothenburg. Hewitt plums the darkness in search of solace and hope. I think this sounds great. Um, it's been blurbed by Colm Tobin and Sarah Perry, both of whom I like. So, interesting? Yes. My last book of the month club book this month was When We Were Bright and Beautiful. Did you like that? By Jillian Medoff. Um, the acclaimed best-selling author of The Cold Hurt returns with her biggest, boldest novel yet, an electrifying, twisty, and deeply emotional family drama set on Manhattan's glittering Upper East Side that explores the dark side of love, the limits of loyalty, and the high cost of truth. Um, <clears throat> I know a couple people who have read this already said it's very interesting. I know barely anything about it, although it's supposed to be like, you know, uh, very shadowy in terms of the protagonist, very kind of a lot of gray areas going through this. Sounds intriguing, I'm in. Last, the last book, I think this is such a cool cover, The Dove in the Belly. I wish you could also feel this, guys, because it's um, the boards give it total weight. Interesting. Um, at the University of North Carolina, Ronnie's made some friends, kept his secrets, survived dorm life, and protected his heart until he can't. 
Ben is in some ways Ronnie's opposite. He's big and solid where Ronnie is small and slight. Ben at UNC on a football scholarship, confident with that easy jock swagger and an explosive temper always simmering. He has a steady stream of girlfriends. Ben's aware of the overwhelming effect he has on Ronnie. It's like a sensation of power. So easy to tease Ronnie, throw playful, in, playful insults, but it all feels somehow loaded. Hmm. I didn't give you the rest of it, but this sounds very intriguing to me. And again, love this cover. That is a wrap. That should be enough to keep me for the next week and a half, at least until I can't resist buying something. I'm really trying to get better about saying, why don't you get that library book? And then if you love it, then buy it. Um, but we all know there's a big difference between buying books and reading books. They're very two different hobbies. Sometimes they sink. Okay, so have a great rest of your day, everyone, or morning, wherever you are. Um, thank you again for stopping by. And if you liked this content, please do your thing, like and subscribe, and I will see you all soon. Thanks.